Herkese merhabalar, ben Hakan Ölekli, KPMG Otomotiv Grubu temsilcisiyim. Bir süredir otomotiv sektörü ile ilgili KPMG'de çalışıyorum. Bugün aramızda özellikle ESG konularında bize destek veren, Hollanda'da çalışan arkadaşımız Şerben Musa ile beraberiz. Bugün otomotiv sektörü ve ESG konularını birlikte tartışacağız. ESG konularına değinmeden önce otomotiv sektöründe kısaca yaptığımız bir araştırmadan bahsetmek isterim. Onun ESG ile de alakası var, birazdan değineceğim. 20 yılı aşkın süredir tekrar ettiğimiz yıllık ve yaklaşık dünyada binin üzerinde global otomotiv yöneticisinin katıldığı anketimizi 2021 yılında tekrarladık ve 2022'nin başlarında açıklamıştık. Burada daha önceden de gördüğümüz trend devam etmekte olup bu trend elektrikleşme adını verdiğimiz yeni bir trend aslında. Her ne kadar yeni destek de bu aslında bir süredir ajandalarımızın en üstlerinde yer alan maddelerden bir tanesi. Elektrikleşme ile beraber KPMG uzmanlarının katılımcılardan aldığı içgörüye göre, öngörüye göre yaklaşık 2030 yılında dünyada satılan araçların %50'sinin elektrikli araç olması bekleniyor. Tabii bunun bir şartı var. O da şu, mevcut e, içten yanmalı araçların üretim maliyetlerinin 2030-35'e kadar elektrikli araç üretimini yakalaması şartıyla bunun e, oluşacağı öngörülüyor. Bu çok önemli bir rakam. E, bu beraberinde teknolojik olarak bir sürü devrimi ve değişimi getiriyor. Dijitalleşme ve e, beraberinde aslında ESG konularından da bahsedeceğiz demiştik. Karbon salınımının Azaltılması da beraberinde geliyor. Bugün Şerbe'nin aslında uzmanlık konularından bir tanesi karbonsuzlaşma ve ESG konuları olduğu için otomotiv sektöründe bunları birlikte değerlendireceğiz. First of all, I would like to thank you for being here with us today. Uh, as you know, my name is Hakan Elekli. I am leading the automotive sector in KPMG Turkey. And thanks again Şerbe for being us today. Uh, I want to have a conversation with you about the automotive industry and ESG today. And I would like to start with the automotive industry. Uh, as we know that automotive industry is a real important pillar uh, for the global economy and uh, one of the main driver for the technological advancement and uh, growth in the economic environment uh, in both developed countries and the developing countries, especially since uh, automotive industry is a special industry spanning across many sub-industries. And as you know, As KPMG, we are repeating a global survey among the uh, global executives all around the world. Uh, this is uh, being done for almost 20 years, actually. So in the latest research that we have done with the global automotive executives, we found that especially the electrification is really coming. So the electrification, as we already, let's say, discussing for almost last five years, is going to challenge the whole industry as well as the other industries, but especially the automotive industry. So uh, based on the researches, both in the Europe and the US markets, we know that although there's a wide of, let's say, expectations around 40 to 60, but it is the main acceptance that around 50% of the cars that's going to be produced and sold in the near future, especially between 2030 and 2035, is going to be electric. So uh, this is one of the challenge. So it means that it's going to hit the market very soon and everybody should be read about that. Uh, with the electrification, we know that the electrification is going to be managed uh, or let's say achieved at that stage with the, the, the reach of the cost of production of the electrification. Because if the market or the, let's say industry is reaching the parity of cost of production Uh, as compared to internal combustion engines uh, to the electrification, uh, the, the, the 50% can be achievable in the, uh, let's say, midterm. Uh, also, there is another heading in the, let's say, research saying that the electrification, both mobility and digitalization, actually. So the, the, the whole industry is constantly under pressure for the whole coming trends, actually. I mean, with the electrification, for sure, decarbonization is one of the hottest topic on the agenda. So we know that everybody in the automotive industry, including the OEM, especially the spare, uh, spare parts suppliers, are under pressure for the low carbon economy, decarbonization. So uh, also there is some political measures uh, about that actually, yeah, especially in the Europe, we know that uh, there is some restrictions, political uh, regulations about the ESG challenges and low carbon economy. So uh, around the ESG topic, I want to talk to you Uh, how do you see the automotive industry international uh, from the international perspective? Uh, what's the challenges? 
uh, you are expecting the, the, the about the ESG and especially for the decarbonization. Uh, maybe we can start uh, from this topic actually. Thank you, Hakan, uh, and thanks for having me. It's really a pleasure. You touch base on uh, several points, uh, and I will reflect on them uh, very quickly, and then I will come to decarbonization. So indeed, uh, the train of electrification in the, in the automotive industry have left the station, right? And what we see coming, maybe not on the short term that you spoke about, but maybe a bit the longer uh, or the medium, the medium term, is also hydrogenation. So there is also another perspective to keep in mind when we talk about decarbonization, regulation, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one. The second is the cost parity indeed, and the challenges across the value chain in order uh, to get this cost parity, because the cost parity is not only in the manufacturing itself, but it's actually how do you get the raw materials and how do you basically at the end of life deal with that. And the third thing, you have the regulation. Um, we know that this whole, and as you mentioned, the automotive industry is a driver for digitization, innovation, new technology. This has always been basically pushed maybe through improvement of the automotive, uh, improvement of uh, the driver experience, luxury, etc., etc. What we see now is that this push is also coming because of decarbonization. So the move to electric vehicles or hydrogen vehicles is not only because of improving customer experience or to, to have a more luxurious drive, but is actually in order to be resilient and to transform to a low carbon economy. In that perspective, legislation are, 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 are playing a big, big role. As we know, many European countries have, have regulations that per a certain year, they will not allow internal combustion engine ICE anymore, right? The second thing is uh, uh, consumers are starting to play also a role by demanding more and more electric vehicles. But then there are challenges. And the challenges are not only at the producer themselves, but actually at the, uh, uh, at the suppliers, right? Uh, and across the whole value chain. And in Turkey, I think as you have many suppliers for main OEMs, this is also coming, coming here. So some of the challenges we see are raw materials. Some of the challenges we see is how can you innovate not only in the electric, but also within the conventional ICE, right? That there will still be a big share of the market. So for example, better engines, more efficient engines, more efficient tires, etc., etc. There is a lot there we should not forget. And also, how can we build the right infrastructure in order to accommodate yeah. right electric vehicles or maybe in the future hydrogen? Mm -hmm. So this is where we see the opportunities, but also a little bit the challenges within the automotive industry. So just to recap, the decarbonization, I would say, of the industry is not only in the OEMs, but it's actually the whole value chain. And if the value chain does the value chain suppliers, customers, regulation, but also infrastructure does not support the OEM to provide a decarbonized product, they will struggle themselves. You're definitely right, right actually. In Turkey, you already know that, but we have to repeat this again. Turkey is accepted as a production base for especially the Western countries. Huh? Uh, we are producing and exporting, and it is really important for the economy. Since this is the international trend or the global trend we are going right now, we have to follow this trend. We know from our colleagues or let's say contacts in the industry that they are getting prepared for this new trend, although it's not new trend by the way, this important trend, uh, I, I have to repeat the same. Uh, although we have strong OEMs, these are multinationals mostly, as you know, but we have a very strong base for spare part production. Got it. Uh, we are in touch with the National Spare Part Association, by the way. They have, a, let's say, members uh, base uh, around, uh, more than 400 uh, companies. So it, it is really important, including the locals and the internationals, but they have to be ready for the future trend. Huh? It, it's not just for the, let's say, replacement of the components with the electric vehicles, with the conventional vehicles, but so also they have to be ready uh, from the corporate perspective 
uh, for the, let's say, regulations, for the European market regulations, for the decarbonization, not only for the components they are producing, but in the production processes as well. Yeah, and I think, I think also, and this is where it's an important point, it's not only decarbonization that's coming into the play today. We see more ESG, environment, social and governance topic. So, for example, how do you make sure that the resources you're using, especially natural resources, are mined ethically? How do you treat the people, the employee, right, within the value chain well, right? How do you make sure that you don't, for example, support corruption, right? You remain transparent, especially that raw material can come from countries where there are certain questions. So indeed, you're touching on a very good point that today the, the sustainability challenges within the industry, maybe they start from decarbonization, but we start seeing them really broadening. Thank you, Sharbel. Uh, it was very useful for the audience, I guess. I have a final question to you. KPMG predicts that by 2030, the mobility and the transportation industry will change completely. Uh, what role do you think that automotive manufacturers should play in this change, actually? And what advice would you give to manufacturers in Turkey, both OEMs, especially display parts producers, who want to take an active role in this transformation? As you mentioned at the beginning, the transformation of the economy and society is really driven by mobility, right? And OEMs play a major role. Uh, we have seen in the pandemic that our social behavior have changed. In the future, we do expect, for example, with self-driving cars, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there will be a big change also how people think about where they live, how they live, urbanization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So back to your point, I think our personal car and how we use the car from a car sharing or other alternative methods, it's gonna change and this will lead to a change in the industry. We see it coming already, we've seen it in Uber and now we've seen it more and more in, in other type of business model. So this is maybe on the first one and then this leads to the second one that indeed Turkey being a production powerhouse, right? You need to be prepared. If you just sit in my view and wait for the pressure to come while well, you're not prepared, you're too late. You need to prepare in order to service, I would say, by the time someone asks. And this is why you will maintain your leadership position in a, in a, in a production powerhouse. Thank you. Actually, Turkey is, uh, for a while, is getting prepared for this new shift in the, let's say, macro uh, trends, actually. So we are, I mean, to me, I mean, it seems that we can adapt ourselves, but the world is rapidly changing, especially after the pandemic. So nobody knows what's going to happen in the next, let's say, wave. Uh, but we have the, let's say, awareness in terms of this. And with this opportunity, thank you very much for, let's say, emphasizing this for the whole audience. I think it's going to be useful for every audience that we are uh, talking to right now. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. I thank hope you. to see you again. Thank Maybe you we much. talk in 2030 and we see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.